Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Now, if you don't have a King James Version of the Bible, and it's not your preference, that's okay. But they have a Bible app, several as a matter of fact. I'm gonna recommend the My Sword Bible app that you can download for free in your computer, or you can go to BibleGateway.com and you can use that app. I use the King James Version because I know from my experience that it is the most accurate translation that we have to this day. and I have a Bible study video titled, Why Be King James Only? I encourage you to study with me on that video and then you'll see why I use the King James. Anyway, didn't mean to digress. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. The title of today's Bible study is, Should Christians Use Anointing Oil? Today's Bible study is an answer to a question from a young lady named Sarah Stiles. She says, Hi Barton, can you make a video on the use of anointing oil, anointing water, and handkerchiefs? I see many pastors preach on the use of it saying it is to be used as a faith substance. I want to know whether it is right for a child of God to be using anointing oil, water, or handkerchiefs as faith substance. Please, can you make a Bible study video to explain this to me and others? Thank you. Well, like I've said many times before, that is my purpose for living is to do the will of God, and God has called me to be a Bible teacher and preacher. And so, yes, this is the video as you requested. And it's very important that you study to show yourself approved unto God. The scripture says, a work man, but in your case, a work woman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So it's okay to ask me to do videos on particular subjects, but you be a student of the word every single day of your life. Spend time in your father's word and ask him in the name of Jesus to help you understand. And a lot of this stuff, God will reveal directly to you because you are being obedient and studying his word every day. Okay. So I don't want you to get comfortable with me or nobody else because my purpose for doing these videos is to try to get people so interested in the word that eventually they don't need me at all. So my purpose is to drive you into the word. I'm the opposite of the false preachers. The false preachers don't want you to study the word so they can pull things out of context and put their own spin on it and then tell you that you're supposed to be giving them some money for it too. But a real minister wants to see you grow. So let's deal with this. Should Christians use anointing oil? Anointing oil is mentioned 20 times in scripture in the 
in the Holy Bible. In the Old Testament, the anointing oil was for the sole purpose of anointing the high priest and his descendants and also sprinkling the tabernacle, you know, which was the tent of the congregation, the tent that the Lord told Moses to have built where he would meet and talk with him and give him instruction to give to the children of Israel and all the furnishings that were inside of that tent. And so that was the purpose of that anointing oil in the Old Testament. And it wasn't supposed to be used by anybody else. That's why in Exodus chapter 30, verse 32 and 3, we read, Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall ye make any other like it. You see that? After the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. So only Aaron and his sons and descendants were supposed to use this anointing oil. Verse 33 says, Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, which is a foreigner, shall even be cut off from his people. So when you hear some so-called reverend telling you, you got to use the anointing oil. Well, he obviously didn't read this because God just said the anointing oil mentioned in the Bible was not supposed to be used by anybody except Aaron and his descendants. That's why you got to know the word for yourself. And in the same 30th chapter, he tells you exactly uh, what it was made of. Uh, in verse 23, we read, Take thou also unto the principal spices a pure myrrh, 500 shekels. Shekels is a, a measurement. And of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels. So 500 shekels of pure myrrh and 250 shekels of sweet cinnamon and up casimum, 250 shekels. Then verse 24 says, and of cassia, 500 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary and of olive oil and hen. And that's also a measurement. So this is, these are the spices that this anointing oil was to be made of. And nobody was supposed to use it except the high priest. Now anointing is mentioned many times in the Old Testament as well as the New. But when we're talking about anointing oil, the only one who was supposed to use that were the high priest Aaron, which was Moses' brother, and his sons and, and their descendants. They're the only ones who were supposed to use it. Anointing was a custom in the Old, Old Testament that was used when God was about to install a new king or a prophet, but when it came to the priests of God, they were to use this particular oil. In the New Testament, we see anointing only mentioned a total of four times. When it came around after the time of Christ, anointing was used when it involved someone who was sick. Because in James, Chapter 5, verse 14, we read, Is any sick among you, James says? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, it didn't say anointing oil. It just said oil, period. Verse 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if any have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. So this is the way it was during the time after Christ had come into the world and died for us. Anointing was, as far as the church was concerned, a job or chore done by the elders as a ritual mixed with their prayer for the sick. And this book of James was written to the 12 tribes that were scattered all over, the ones who had been converted to being followers of Jesus. You will see that in the very first chapter and very first verse. Now, in Mark 6, verse 13, we read, And they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. So we see at this time it has to do with anointing people who were sick. And the elders were the ones who were supposed to do it. So if your reverend is telling you that you're supposed to do it, and you're not an elder, something's very wrong with that. Anyway, in Mark 14, we see 
when Christ was anointed in fulfillment of a prophecy that was given in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. So I'm going to read that first. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But unto the Son he saith, that is God the Father, said to his Son, Thy throne, O God. Now notice he calls his Son God because Jesus is part of the Godhead. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. These three make up the Godhead, all right? But unto the Son he saith, or Jehovah said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now, I believe this was a prophecy concerning what I'm about to read to you in Mark 14. Mark 14 verse 3 says, and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, or as Jesus sat at dinner, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. Now notice it was not that anointing oil that we read about a little while ago. This was spikenard, a very precious ointment. And and she broke the box and poured it on his head. So I believe the Lord had her do this in fulfillment of what we just read in Hebrews chapter 1, which was quoting from the Old Testament. And so these are the only four places where you find anointing oil mentioned in the Gospels and in the New Testament books. Now, should Christians use anointing oil? Let's answer that question to wrap this up. Well, in 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 18, the Apostle John writes, Little children, it is the last time. That means we're living in the last days. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. John says, we're living in the last days. You heard that the Antichrist is coming, but there's a whole bunch of Antichrists running around right now. He says in verse 19, they went out from us. They left the church, but they were not of us. They weren't really converted and they weren't really Christians anyway. That's why they left. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest or made known that they were not all of us. That was 19, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Now, what is this word unction? When we look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's the Greek word 5547, chrisma. And it comes from another Greek word, 5548, that means a smearing. That is, figuratively, the special endowment, chrism, of the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is, you have been anointed by the Holy Spirit sent down from Almighty God. He indwells every believer. And that's why he says, ye know all things. He teaches you all things. And so that's the anointing that is of the utmost importance right now. Now, the Bible tells us that the elders in the church have a commandment to anoint the sick and pray over them. That's all you're going to find on that. You're not going to find anywhere in there where he told you to make some special anointing oil or some anointing water. And you're not going to hear anything about no handkerchiefs. The handkerchief was a miracle that God performed through Paul. And it's only mentioned once in the Bible. And there's nowhere in there that tells us to do that. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, it says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. 12. So that from his body, whose body? From Paul's body, were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So, you know, that's why you have to get into our Father's Word and let it get into you. Because you got some of these preachers up here who will tell you all kind of stuff that's not right. So, I'm telling you, don't ever take any so-called man of God's word for it. If they tell you something, you go check it out in the book. 
But if you are a student of the word, soon as you hear it, you're going to be familiar with it. And it's very important that you learn how to follow the subject that you're reading. Because anybody can grab a verse here and pull it out and give it any meaning that they want to give it. And that's what happens a lot of times. And that's why these you heard these pastors telling you, you got to have the anointing oil and the anointed water and the handkerchiefs. You know, and as you just saw, that none of those things are true. The anointing oil was only to be used by the high priest and his descendants, Moses' brother Aaron and his sons and all of their descendants. And that priesthood is ended. So that anointing oil ain't supposed to be used at all at this time. And then when we come to the time of Christ and after, we see the elders are given a commandment to anoint the sick and pray over them. Nobody else. So understand that you and I have the most important anointing of all, and that is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, okay? And he teaches us and guides us into all truth and gives us the power to live for the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Father, Almighty God, Jehovah. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441. Four, five, six, three, and then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to Patreon.com/slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Do not call me late at night when people are asleep in the bed. That's just not cool. So use some discretion, but I encourage you to call me. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to BartonAaronPorter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, Take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. I've seen a lot of people watch and study with me on a regular basis, but they're not even subscribed to the channel. Hit the subscription button. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. 
If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry. And I need your support, saints. So please do that. And last but not least, it just came to my mind. If you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. It encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain. And God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. 